Hello everyone and welcome. In this lesson, we will use constraint to set up our arm rig. So for our arm setup or the arm rig, we will use constraints. Now you may be asking yourself, what are constraints? Well, constraints allow us to lock down transform parameters of an object with another object or by another object. So basically, we are driving the transform values or parameters of an object by another or using the transform values of another object. We have constraints that will allow us to lock down the position, the rotation, and the scale. And what's great about constraints is that they can be animated and have its weight or have that connection created to be turned on and off. So if we don't want, for instance, that constraint to work at a certain time, we can simply turn that weight off and actually have that animated. So we have a lot of control and flexibility with constraints. All right, beautiful. So let's go ahead and finish this up by constraining the arm rig we have created to the new control object. Now to do so, we will first select the object that will be constrained. In this case, it is going to be our IK Go. So with it selected, we would want to constrain its position by going to the animation menu under the constraints submenu, we will choose the position constraint. Now from there, we would want to pick the object that will be constrained to. In our case, it is going to be the new control we have just built. All right. Now, as we select our new control curve, and as we start to move this around, all right, take a look. We are now driving the IK Go. And with that, the entire arm rig is following, which is super cool. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> now, to get our control back to its default position, all we need to do is press the Alt right click, as we have learned in the previous lesson, then we'll choose transform to zero, and boom. All right, this saves us a lot of time, okay? And so now let's say we go ahead and finish this up by working on the wrist. So essentially we would want to constrain the orientation of the wrist to the rotation of the new control. And by doing so, we will control the rotation of the wrist by this new control we have just built. And by doing so, we will then have created an efficient control that manipulates not only the position of the arm, but also the rotation of the wrist, just using one control, which is going to be super cool. <laughs> Again, to do so, we would want to select first the object that we would like to constrain. In this case, it is going to be the wrist bone. Then from the animation menu, under the constraint submenu, we'll choose this time the orientation constraint. It is located all the way at the bottom of this menu, okay? Here is the orientation constraint. Next, we need to pick the object we would like to constrain our wrist bone to. That's going to be the new control. Now, when we do so, watch what's going to happen. You see that the bone kind of shifts because the orientation of the constraint is, is trying to match the orientation of the wrist bone to the orientation of the arm control. So that's basically what happened. Now, chances are we don't want that bone to shift. So to get it back to the original position, all we need to do is head over to the motion tab Okay, of course, with our wrist bone selected, we need to go back to the motion tab and under the rotation list, we would want to scroll all the way down until we get to the orientation constraint 
rollout apply to this wrist bone? And specifically, we'll need to look for this option, keep initial offset. This is actually what we need to check. And now when we check that on, the bones pop successfully back to its original position. So here's the four. As you can see, the orientation constraint is trying to match the orientation of the bone, the wrist bone to the orientation of the arm control, which is, I think that none of us want to do so because which is not a great thing unless you want that but you have this option in case you need to preserve the initial orientation of the wrist bone and so if we check this option on all right now we have the wrist bone pops back to its default position which is super cool another really cool feature about constraints is this option over here all right let's now check this out if we were now to select our arm control and start moving this around we should notice a difference in our wrist notice how the orientation of the wrist is no longer following the forearm now we have full control over the rotation of the wrist and to check that out if we were to grab the rotate tool and as we start to rotate our arm control around all right take a look we are now controlling the wrist and our friend says hello everyone <laughs> pretty cool right so we can reposition our arm rig and rotate the wrist just from one control object which is super cool now what we have just done is great for a lot of things and especially for hand blends so what that means is we can go to our upper arm bone okay and using the move tool just to show you this if we start to move that around notice that the hand is going to stay planted sorry our friend <laughs> crocodile we don't want to hurt you but i want just to show our friends how this is working so as i said the hand now is going to stay planted and if we try to do this before what we should get at that moment is the hand will actually rotate because it's gonna follow its parent which is the forearm bone and just to show you this if i undo back a few times to get to that moment let me undo back a few times notice now if i were to select the upper arm bone and start moving this around okay notice the, the difference the hand as i have told you before is going to follow the rotation of its parent object that is the forearm bone because it is not constrained to anything but now being that we have locked down the orientation of our wrist bone using the orientation constraint to our new control arm control object that's no longer gonna happen all right this is looking wonderful and we have managed to create a nice control object that controls not only the arm rig but also controls the orientation of our friend hand all right so that's basically an overview about control object and constraints inside 3ds max in the next lesson we will talk about skinning